Good afternoon and welcome to our 200th program of Our Kitchen. Now that is one accomplishment I didn't think was <laughs> we were going to get this far. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we had lots of fun doing it and I hope everybody has enjoyed seeing us and, do, and making some of our recipes. And um, please, if you want any more, just give us a call or send a self-addressed stamped envelope. <laughs> Today we will be making chili and cornbread and we have a guest cook which is John and Nancy's son Jeff. How do you do? And he's going to start off with his chili. Okay well thank you Gordy. Uh, we wanted to do something different on our 200th and uh, so we thought a little bit and the be best thing to do is to have a guest come and uh, give us a little break. So my son Jeff uh, is a savory chef down at uh, Bread Euphoria, which is on Route 9 in Haydenville, just before you get into Leeds. And years ago, I don't think he ever imagined he'd be doing this, but um, something changed and he said, yeah, I'll do it for you. Um, he went to Johnson & Wales for two years and uh, he's been cooking for quite a while. He didn't cook a lot at home, um, so his talent, did he get it from his mother? I don't know, but uh, anyways, uh, he does very well. Um, the restaurant down there is both uh, a bakery and uh, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, Jeff makes some great quiches, soup, um, pizzas, sandwiches, and... Um, he gets quite a call for the things that he he uh, uh, thinks up because uh, do you think up some of the stuff yourself? Of course. Yeah. yeah. It, then he's better than I am because I need a recipe. So next time you go down there, you're taking me with you. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> um, I th a few months back, there was a chili cook-off in Haydenville. It was the first one at the Congregational Church. And uh, Jeff decided to enter, and he was the people's choice. So I said, I thought people like chili. It's still cold out when we're doing this at the end of March. And I said, I think that's what I want to have you make. So we're calling it Jeff's Hilltown Chili. And I'm going to let you start and uh, turn it over to you. Well, thank you, and congratulations, ladies, on 200 episodes. Or thank you. 199 so far. <laughs> we'll <see laughs> we haven't got through this one, one yet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start by turning on our burner uh, and sauteing a pound of ground beef. And breaking it up with a slotted spoon. I want to brown this well, five, five, ten minutes or so till it's all cooked. I'm using 85% um, uh, beef and 15% fat. Um, a little more fat or flavor in the fat, and uh, it's not overly expensive. And with the, all the other flavors, it uh, should blend in rather nicely. This has a long list of ingredients. Lots of ingredients. It. Yes. Uh, chili is commonly just, you know, uh, your meat and tomato, chili, peppers, a um, little onion. I like to add in a little chorizo, which is a, uh, uh, this is the Mexican chorizo. Chorizo is a Spanish and Mexican styles. The Spanish is more of a uh, cooked, cured sausage, whereas the uh, Mexican chorizo is a, finer grind, but it's raw, so you still have to cook that, and we'll add that in later. So I think while that is uh, browning yes. down, we'll yep. turn it over. We'll turn it okay. over. Okay, today I'm going to make uh, what's called an easy corn bread. Um, in my bowl here, I have one and a quarter cups of flour, 
I have three quarters cup of cornmeal. A quarter cup of sugar. That's in my, it w was in my uh, cornmeal, I mean my flour and sugar, and baking powder and salt. And I'm going to mix these up a little bit. You don't really want to use a mixer to do this because all they want you to do when you mix up a cornmeal like this is just to dampen the ingredients that are in there and put it in your pan. So that's the ingredients for that. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of shortening Crisco oil and I'm going to add a cup of skim milk and I'm going to add an egg that I beat it up a little bit So now that's all the ingredients for the cornbread. So it's very easy to make. So I'm going to mix it so it until it all gets dampened. shape. Okay, so I've got a, a pan that I'm going to put this in. Make sure you get all the good stuff that's in here. to flatten and even this out. And I'm going to put it into a 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. That's good. Okay. After she gets that in the oven. And I'm going to put this in a 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Keep an eye on it after the 20 minutes are up to make sure that it's nice and golden brown. And back to Jeff. Yep. He says it's ready. Alrighty. Our ground beef is sauteed. So we're going to drain it. Or in this case, we're just going to scoop it out with a slotted spoon and reserve it on the side. a little trick that I just picked up where we're going to take a little cornmeal and toss it in with the remaining beef fat. Saute that up a little bit. It'll absorb the beef fat and give us a little more body. We'll put it back into the chili to help thicken it later. So we'll saute this up a little bit. sweet onion because I know my mom likes sweet onions and they were on sale and 
and uh, you can use yellow onions or shallots or pretty much any onion you'd like. She likes the dahlias. She does, yes. She loves those. <laughs> They'll be there out pretty soon. They probably got them in the south, but I'm sh oh, I'm sure they grow down there, don't they? That's yeah. where they grow, come from. Yeah. So we'll saute these around for a little while and add in um, some garlic and uh, one small jalapeno that I diced up. Now, you want to make sure if you're using um, any hot pepper, any chili pepper, that you do not uh, touch any sensitive parts of your body after you've used, after you've <laughs> handled them, <laughs> like your eyes, your nose. Um, so wash your hands first always and wash the cutting boards and the knife you use because it will, it will, it will burn, let me tell you. <laughs> now when in, in season, I'm thinking about the restaurant, you, because you do the ordering for all the th uh, things that you prepare down there, you use local as much as you can. As we can. You? It's yeah. a lot easier in um, the summertime because yes. of all the local farms. Yeah. But uh, we use um, a purveyor uh, uh, called squash produce, which is in... Uh, Pelham Mass on the other side of, of the river, uh, the Connecticut River, and they do a really good job at buying from local farms um, in the valley. Yeah, because the valley is a great farmland. Lots of, yeah, lots of good uh, river, river earth. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to uh, let go saute some more, and he'll add his um, garlic and uh, jalapeno. And then we'll be back when that's uh, you're ready to continue on. Okay, so we've come back, and I've added about three tablespoons of chopped garlic, and one, as I said, one medium uh, jalapeno, finely chopped. And we've sautéed those down a little bit, and now we're going to add in the liquid. So I've got a big can of crushed tomatoes. I like to use crushed tomatoes because they're they're not as big as you know as a, as a tomato chunk, but they're not as fine as tomato sauce, so it gives a little bit more body to the chili itself. Um, and then I'm going to say about half, uh, about eight ounces of beef uh, beef stock. So it's about half this can. And some people will stop there. I like to add some other things to give more depth of flavor to my chili. Um, some people like to add uh, beer or cocoa powder or coffee. Um, I'm a big believer in the beer and the coffee angle. Uh, and we'll even use different beers based on the season. Like in the wintertime, I'll use a darker beer. Um, summertime, you know, lighter. Um, so I don't have any coffee, but I do have a coffee porter which is a dark beer with brewed with coffee. So I'm going to add just a little bit. And the alcohol will all cook out as it cooks, so no worries there. You don't want to add enough so that it tastes like coffee or it tastes like beer. You just want to have people wondering what that flavor is. In a good way, mind you. So we're going to turn it up and bring it to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and cook it for about 15 minutes. So, another time for it to send it over to Gordy, I guess? I think so. Okay. Okay. Um, I made some cream de mint. I've been making cream de mint cakes and cupcakes for the last week. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I made one for um, a teacher that I drew her name in school for. And I made her a cake, and I made one for um, St. Patrick's Day for my daughter's lunch, or supper, and I'm still making it. Anyway, I made some cream de mint cupcakes, and I'll tell you what, how to make the cream de mint cupcakes. So this is your uh, uh, from scratch recipe? This is from, um, no, uh, this is from a yellow cake mix. Yellow cake mix, which you added. But I added a lot of stuff to it. Yeah. Um, you had take a yellow cake mix and you put in a third of a cup of cream de mint, a third of a cup of um, s um, 
What do I need? <laughs> cream to mint. I have a cup of sour cream, a box of pistachio um, instant pudding, um, a third of a cup of um, cream to mint, and a yellow cake mix. And I used my, um, what I want is uh, my um, cupcake holders, and I put the cake mix into the cupcake holders. Now, and for the frosting, I have a box of confectionery sugar, a stick of, uh, stick of butter, a teaspoon of um, vanilla, and a pinch of salt, and that's the uh, vanilla frosting. I was going to get a little fancy today, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't... I tried to get her to get fancy, but... I um, didn't want to embarrass my cohorts here <laughs> or myself. Well, anyway, th th it is my dream to one day be able to decorate a beautiful cake. Yeah. And I've been trying to learn. I've taken two less. I've taken two courses in it, and I still can't make a rose. So, but anyway, it's going to happen. I'm going to um, frost the cupcakes. Do you want me to get with you the frosting? A Another plate to put them on. Sure. Yeah. I should have brought one of my fancy plates over. We have a yellow cake. Uh, I think it's up here. Yes. Jeff, would you we'll just do this on the, there's the yellow cake. We're going green and yellow today. There we are. There you are. Good. Thank you. On there. Yep. I have a grandson that likes cream de mint cake. He won't. Sometimes he won't let have anybody else have any. He has to hide it. And I have a great grandson. It's only it's sixteen like years it. old. That likes it too. That's okay. It's very easy to make and it's delicious. When I can make a rose, then I will do a cake. Okay, I think we will break for, it's not quite ready yet, and uh, another step Jeff wants to do. So we will take a break and be back when he uh, gets set up for his next. Uh, and these are our cream de mint cupcakes. Enjoy, everybody. It makes them. I hope you enjoy them. So I uh, neglected earlier to actually cook off the chorizo that I had mentioned. Uh, so I did that on our little break, and I'm uh, going to add that into the chili, along with some seasonings and our ground cooked off ground beef. So it's just, this is about eight ounces of, as I said, Mexican chorizo. And we're simmering here. So I'm going to add back in our ground beef. Stir that around. And some spices. Uh, in here I've got a mixture of uh, paprika, cumin, uh, chili powder, and a tiny bit of cayenne pepper. So I'm going to put a couple of <laughs> tablespoons of this mix in here and stir that in. Now, for people that uh, might not, uh, how warm is it? Meaning this is just going to be kind of medium. I mean, you can leave out any of the heat that you want. Yeah. Um, that's all. I try not to make it too spicy because we have to sell it at the restaurant. But enough so that, you know, it'll warm you up on a nice cold yeah, well day. <laughs> it'll warm you all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> 
And let's add in a little bit of our cornmeal saute for a good measure. Don't forget your beans. Those I'm gonna put in in a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't want them to cook too long. Don't want them to split open. Exactly. And I've got a can of, a uh, 15 ounce can of black beans and pinto beans. I like to use a couple of different kinds. Uh, drained and lightly rinsed. The uh, natural proteins in the beans will help thicken the chili too. So let's let this simmer for about 15 more minutes and okay. uh, check back. Okay, thank you. All right, now I'm going to take the uh, cornbread out of the oven. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to test it to see if it's done. Yeah, it is. Yep. Okay, that's all set to go. And Jeff? We're just going to do one last step, and it's add our beans in. And uh, you don't want to necessarily put these in too early because uh, they might break down or split open and not look quite as nice. And at this point, I'll also add in a little bit of salt. You want to add your salt in kind of at the last minute because uh, your, so your chili is reduced down and be, you don't want to over salt it. So we'll just let that simmer for a few more minutes and then we'll add everything together. So when we come back, we'll be at our table. And um, we're just saying that this will be even better tomorrow, like lots of other things, but you do want to simmer it for a while, and uh, simmer it uh, uncovered, yeah, that'll thicken it Yep, it'll reduce a lot, too. a little faster. Yeah, so, uh, so there is our Hilltown chili, and our cornbread, which, you know, people have cornbread and chili all the time, uh, and uh, when we return, we'll be at our table. Welcome back to our table, our 200th table. Uh, this is quite a milestone for us, and because of that, we bought ourselves new aprons, even a different color. We're green and yellow, and I happened to bring yellow flowers and green candles, and uh, we got green cupcakes, and so we look kind of festive today. <laughs> We're green. <laughs> We're green. Of course, uh, uh, filming this is near St. Patrick's Day, but uh, anyways, it makes a pretty color combination. So for a special thing for today, um, we invited my, our son, my husband and I, our son, Jeff, uh, who is a chef down at Bread Euphoria, which is in Haydenville, down Route 9. And this chili that he made, which he'll go over a little in a minute, is served down there, um, not all the time. So if you happen to drive past there or you stop there to eat. Uh, maybe it'll be on the menu. You might be lucky. Um, it won, uh, 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 let's see, People's the Choice. People's Choice at a chili cook-off in Haydenville about a couple of months ago. So it must be good. Um, so I'm going to have Jeff go over a few of the ingredients in the chili. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just, uh, it's got a couple of meats, uh, ground beef and some chorizo, uh, a couple of different kinds of beans and tomatoes and other little spices that uh, make it all, all worthwhile. And uh, Gordy, you added to this. Okay, I made, um, I didn't do these on the show, I made them home so I can have some time to frost them. And I made um, cream de mint cupcakes and um, I've gone into a cream de mint mode, I think. I um, hope I'm all done for a while. <laughs> anyway, to make the cream de mint cake, you can make them into cupcakes. It's made out of yellow cake mix, uh, cream, one third cup of cream de mint, and a cup of sour cream, a box of pistachio pudding, and you mix them all together and put it in a greased pan or cu cupcake papers. And then you frost it with a white confectionery sugar, The recipes on the confectionery sugar box, but it's one box of powdered sugar, one stick of softened butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, a pinch of salt, and three to four tablespoons of milk. And this is our 200th show 
I can't believe we made it. <laughs> I can't believe when we when Nancy and I started talking about doing this that it was going to be on for so long. But it was it's been a fun time and I have enjoyed it and I just love to cook and so I hope you've all enjoyed our 200 programs and we got new aprons so we can't stop quite yet. No, we can't we can't quit yet. So we're going to keep on going another 200. And then to uh, so on this side too we forgot that to go with our chili, you uh, we have cornbread. Cornbread. It's called easy cornbread, and it's made with a, cu a cup and a quarter cups of flour, uh, three quarters cups of cornmeal, uh, sugar and baking powder, salt, milk, vegetable oil, and a beaten egg. And you mix it all up with a spoon and put it in a four degree, four hundred degree oven for twenty to twenty five minutes, and you have cornbread to go with your chili. Which they usually ask you to make when over at the senior center. Yeah, I usually make chili when we have our um, craft show. Yep. And I make three of I make four of those. I make four pans of it, so they can have it with their chili. If you'd like any of these um, envelope um, recipes, please please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Dalton Community Cable, 151 Park Avenue, Dalton, Mass. 01226. And that is all from our kitchen. And thank you for watching. Thank you.